if you're in the mood, I wouldn't mind hearing about your take on on fallen angels. Are they sure. still here? Um, are are they the Nephilim? Um, you know, that's sort of my. Oh, I don't want to call it like a, a my favorite sort of topic because I yeah, haven't read the whole thing. Yeah, well, I I gave a sort of long winded overview in the last thing. I don't know if it was as clear as I wanted it to be because I was just kind of rambling in front of the fire. But um, what I think I can say about it is I think all of these names, like we're we're using the language we created to describe something that the human mind can't comprehend so we're giving it names that aren't necessarily that they gave the names to us it's that we gave the names to them because you see the same descriptions cross-culturally in different periods of time written about in the same way but with different names different mythologies around them different stories around them but you start to notice that the same themes pop up right so to one person's Anunnaki is another person's Nephilim is another person's, uh, you know, the Titans or the Olympians or the, you know. So every, every culture on the earth has their own story that has to do with, as Jack Berenger put it, he wrote a book in the 90s called Past Shock. And um, he said that in his research over 30,000 different ancient documents that are just what's left from all the book burnings and sequestering account have accounts in every language in the world of advanced beings either descending from the heavens to earth or already existing on the earth before humans came on the scene. And so it's a quite a big record of just what, what we have left that isn't like buried away or owned by some aristocratic bloodline family or hidden away in some archive somewhere or even just burnt and lost to time, right? So we're dealing with shards of information and we gave it a mythological framework to explain it because ancient man didn't think in the left brain logical way that we think today. So when we, with our current brain of our age, look back and read the writings of people that were in a different framework of thought and encountering uh, interaction with nature, right? They would have thought with more of a right brain approach of trying to explain it through their own knowledge, which was their cultural identity, their expression of what they thought God was and nature was. So when these events possibly occurred of visitation or revealing of, you know, an advanced civilization that was very small and maybe, you know, was sort of a breakaway civilization that was looked upon as being godlike by ancient peoples because these people would be more advanced than them. So they would immediately ascribe divinity to them. So they wrote stories and said, oh, it was these gods that came from the heavens to the earth. And they all had these names and they interacted and they mated with females. So like what are spiritual beings from other dimensions doing physically mating with females to the point where certain books in, you know, the Book of Enoch and the Apocrypha, Book of Jubilees, Book of Baruch, and many other ancient texts, they talk about the gods mating with the females and producing hybrid beings right? So these were the fallen ones. They looked at them as the fallen ones because previous to that, humans looked at the biggest theater available to us, which was the heavens, the stars and the luminaries, and they crafted entire stories and narratives about those experiences with those luminaries. And so when they saw physical beings actually either descend onto the earth or come from within the earth that had very advanced technology, it would have been very much like, you know, when the Western or the British, you know, East India Company came to the Congo or whatever. Uh, it would have been like that to all of humanity if a more advanced species suddenly revealed itself at a certain point and then have ended up being taking control and acting as gods to them and creating 
a slave force. Like this is what's described very vividly and in many different languages. So that's why I say fallen angels, aliens. Look at, okay, here's a good example of this. In ancient times, they would say Anunnaki, Nephilim, Raphaim, you know, different classes and just whole hordes of different groups of angelic beings and dimensions of heaven and hell and all this stuff. And then you got the Buddhist tradition, nine stages of hell and and all this stuff too, the Tibetans. And you go, okay, well, what are they talking about? They're recounting a combination of historical experiences with something they couldn't explain. So they explained it through the cultural motifs of their time, just as we do. So in our modern time, we say, like when I was coming up in this, it was just aliens, UFOs, and ETs. Like that's what we called them. But now like that's outdated and, you know, now it's NIHs and UAPs. Like, so we already changed the language in our own time, let alone over thousands of years. So when we now have more ability to capture data of whatever the hell this phenomena is, uh, that changes it. So we have ancient script and recounting and legend. And I mean, I've spoken to uh, members of both the Anishinaabe and the Mi'kmaq here in Canada. Um, and I've studied other native myths. And there's a, a common refrain of like the star lodges and the references to the Pleiades and things like that. And how there were advanced star beings that came and mated with earth humans and created hybrid beings. It's the same in many different ancient stories. So um, look at the Greek myths. Look at even in Asia, you go to ancient Chinese mythology japanese mythology it's just incredible so to me i go okay well the ancients were onto something they experienced something they couldn't understand so they just wrote it down the best way they could and then look what we're doing same thing and yet we still don't have a final word on it from any kind of official source you know so um, i think we're dealing with something that is probably linked to us even being here. And I think we're dealing with something that is not, uh, how do you even say it? It's almost like we don't have the cognitive ability to understand exactly what is what it all is. So it's not just that, oh, we want to be ready to learn it. Maybe there's a part of it that's like, it'll happen when we're, cognitively capable of understanding it you know what i mean so it's quite a complicated thing but i just keep an open mind and i'm not just sitting around waiting for the government to come out and go okay uh it's true we were lying to you like we already know so we don't need them to admit something that we already know